Before we get into this video, I want to start you off with a little bit of a hypothetical question. And before you answer, I want you to keep these thoughts with you throughout the duration of the video. You're sitting down in an elaborate restaurant to spend $60 on a nice chicken dinner. I don't know why you'd spend $60 on a chicken dinner, but that's besides the point. And as you begin to dig into that beautiful entree from the outside, you start to realize that it's a little undercooked, maybe half cooked. Now let me ask you this, would you continue to eat that dinner after realizing that it's unfinished and incomplete? Would you be able to enjoy it? And with that, we're going to begin the video. My cyberpunk experience dates all the way back to the first gameplay reveal when it was shown off to be the most creative and technically ambitious looking game that we've ever seen, and for me it looked like everything I had wanted in a video game. We're talking open world sandbox style, GTA style gameplay where I could go and do whatever I wanted, with RPG elements where I could dynamically change a story based on my actions, and to wrap it all up, it was a first person shooter. And if you know anything about me, I, I like, like my, my first person, person games. games. I like aiming the gun and I like shooting stuff. Fast forward through all of the development hell, multiple game delays, um, and all of the drama that's been surrounding it post launch. Here we are with the game. I'm gonna talk about it because I just finished my first playthrough and I think we got a lot to discuss here. If you don't want to hear me say good things about Cyberpunk, dude, you're not gonna like this video. And also, spoiler, if you don't want to hear me say bad things about Cyberpunk, you're not gonna like this video. I'm gonna try to do my best to summarize what this game is and then we'll talk about it. Um, so Cyberpunk, uh, let's see, uh, open world, first person, RPG, set in the year 2077, far into the future, we still got cars with combustion engines, surprisingly, but also, we never get to fly a helicopter. But it's all good, dude, because we get to shoot stuff, and we get romantic interests, and we get a lot of bugs. There's a lot of bugs in this game. I don't know if you guys have heard this, but there's there's at least a couple of bugs in this game. I'll fuck you myself! What might that be? Finally, someone They'll I They'll have their revenge. Fight. You've turned clouds Bruh. into a ticking time. Finally, someone I can fucking fight. Maybe Finally, the lives you cut short will be enough for the cause. Fight. Finally, someone I can fucking fight. Oh yeah, and the story. The story is pretty sick, right? Okay, so I'm going to just do minor spoilers here. I gotta fucking talk about, summarize the game a little bit. So here's what the deal is. You witness a corporate assassination and you end up with this chip that's killing you and it turns out you kind of got the memories of this old uh, legendary iconic person who's Keanu Reeves but in the game he's not Keanu Reeves but you know he's Keanu Reeves because Keanu Reeves is Keanu Reeves and he plays Keanu Reeves with a cybernetic hand and you're fighting your inner demon which is him because he's kind of alive in your head but also he's wiping your memory and he's taking over your body if I need your body I'll fuck it and you're trying to get that sorted out while you're also trying to track down the killers who are responsible for some early death in the game, but also they're responsible possibly for keeping you alive. So, uh, Cyberpunk 2077. First off, open world. Big cyberpunk city, neon signs everywhere. It's like sleeping dogs on steroids. I love it. It's super fun to explore. And geometry and detail wise, this is probably one of the most, if not the most detailed open world games we've ever had. That being said, the NPCs are not the best we've ever had. They're kind of retarded and they don't coherently interact with each other and respond the same way as they should. You'll fire a gun into the air or something and some people will be freaked out and some people will be like, dude, I don't care. I'm just gonna get my soda out the vending machine. Also, police system in this game, laughably bad if almost non-existent. You sh the guy in the head and then three or four cops immediately Bruh. spawn around you and kill you instantly. Getting away from the cops is even easier than it is in Sleeping Dogs. They just vanish after you drive like half a mile. And then your wanted system, you know, it's gone. There's no police chases, which is kind of awkward. Police! You're shooting at police! You gotta beef with all gangs or it's just the tigers. I'm a cop. What do you think? Police! You're shooting at police! 
and it's especially awkward when you go past police checkpoints in this game and you see like these big mechs and uh, military style police vehicles but you never end up having a run-in with any of them because they don't have any of that attacking you when you're wanted man for some reason you're also kind of working with the police doing like crime busts like this is sleeping dogs but I don't ever really remember being introduced into like being part of the police force or something. I'm gonna get some criticism about that in the comments. I'm looking forward to that. I wish there was more shops to explore, more um, interiors to go into maybe, and more of a reason to explore some of the world. There's definitely a good bit of easter eggs and the game does reward you for exploration. In fact, there's a lot of stuff that I actually missed on my first playthrough that I'm gonna have to get in the second one. One thing I recommend doing is the side missions because they're very good, they're almost as good as the main missions, and I think some of that directly ties into the main story, so um, I definitely recommend doing all of the side stuff, it's worth it. The game's uh, heavily RPG influenced, if not an RPG itself, so you have like legendary items and iconic items that you can find scattered through the world. There's crafting, which I never used whatsoever in my first playthrough so far. I'll have to experience that later. You can upgrade your character's skill tree and attributes to tailor fit how you want to play. Not important to your main gameplay, though. You can just kind of run and gun the whole gameplay. You can sneak the gameplay. You can hack the gameplay. Apparently, you can do the whole game non-lethally. But I like shooting stuff and blowing limbs off, so that's what we're doing, baby. And the story, well... It's pretty good. I almost felt like it was a little short. Maybe that's because I didn't do all the side stuff that there was to offer in my first playthrough. But uh, yeah, surprisingly very good, touching, memorable story moments. There's some sad moments that are kind of immediately ruined by some bugs. Yeah, that's a problem with this game. The bugs. Asshole. The next time you fuck something up. When was the last time I fucked anything up? Huh? Hey, where are you going? Nothing to see back here. I'm on the 1.6 patch, still getting bugs in almost every sequence I play this game through. I didn't go through a single mission with no bugs. I haven't played the console version yet, so I can't speak on it. I wanted to have that in this video, but I can't secure a cheap copy, and I'm not going and buying that full price again but i'm on the pc version the the definitive version to play this game and i'm getting bugs every single mission and some of them are really funny whether it be a guy talking that you already killed finally someone i can fucking fight or people floating in midair or cars just spazzing out or just some weird oddity about it it can be entertaining the problem is when that happens Every single mission where you're supposed to be immersed in an RPG, really linked to this narrative story, really feeling a sense of connection to it, that connection is immediately snapped out when you're dealing with something like this. I'm hit! Police! You might feel a little discomfort at first. Does that mean it's a bad game? No, this is a really good game. But the bugs will very most likely take you out of it if it's something that you notice, and trust me, you're gonna notice it. Whether it's just something that feels kind of half-baked or unfinished, like NPCs repeating their path behind you on a sidewalk where they kind of end their path and then turn around and go backwards while you're in the middle of a cutscene, you're gonna notice that. And it's just little immersion-breaking moments like that that kind of knock the story down a little bit of a peg for me just because it's kind of distracting. Nonetheless, there's a ton of story in here, and when the side missions are the at least a lot of the side missions are as good as the main story. There's a lot of content there to be had just on the narrative side of things. Like I said, exploring the city is really fun because it's really detailed, but the driving is kind of awkward, all right? I 
thought it was just me, but after seeing multiple comments, a lot of people just say the driving kind of feels like you're on ice, and I believe it. Every time I try to steer left or right in a car, I kind of like overcorrect and I end up sliding into a sidewalk and killing pedestrians. Luckily, there isn't a good wanted system or that would get really frustrating. There just always kind of felt like there was a little bit of a delay when I went to turn and when the action actually happened. It either felt like I wasn't turning enough or I was turning all the way, and this was both on my keyboard and mouse and on my controller. Both experiences pretty awkward. Can you stop fucking calling? While we're talking about controls, controller options include this weird turning bonus thing in the settings and it completely ruins the way the controller operates. I have no idea why they did this by default, but it felt so, so bad. I felt like I couldn't aim worth a damn, and when I pushed the analog stick all the way to the right, it's like there would be a delay, then it would turn fast. It was horrible, and I have no idea why they implemented this, but after you turn off all those turning bonus settings and sensitivity oddities, the controller with the actual gunplay works fine. Also, gunplay, pretty sick. This game is just like gun porn. Seeing all of the different variations and options in the gun and the animations every time you equip a new weapon looks great. The guns are fun to use, although I found a lot of them just kind of felt really weak. Pan Am, a side character that you meet within this story, has a sniper rifle that you get on one of her side missions. Highly recommend it because this got me through a lot of campaign gameplay. And that's another thing that goes back to the exploration in this game. I recommend if you're gonna play this, do a lot of the side stuff. Try to find a lot of those legendary weapons because they're gonna come in handy later and if you don't find them you're gonna be left with a long battle during the end of the story and then you're gonna finish it and then you're gonna be like oh I didn't get all the cool guns that I could have gotten earlier. Oops. Luckily there's more story paths you can take when you start up the game. I don't think they heavily change the story or anything but they give you some different dialogue options. The story will change a little bit depending on the dialogue choices you make which is awesome and it's gonna give the game a little more replayability which I'm looking forward to but a lot of the time your dialogue choices just boil down to yes or yes but sarcastically. Also the genital change in thing when you start up the game oh yeah it's really funny but it actually serves no purpose so um, yeah if you're looking forward to some kind of interesting gameplay changing element nope Before we wrap up this video and head to the conclusion, there's one more thing I want to discuss that I learned during the editing process of this video. You'll notice during this video that I constantly mention that the game kind of feels unfinished, half-baked. But there's actually prime examples of just straight up unfinished content within the game. There's multiple videos covering this and I definitely recommend that you check these out if you're more interested in this stuff. But there's straight up things like an unfinished train station where you can go to the monorail and you can open up doors to find an unfinished room where there was going to be an accessible train station, but we can only assume that they just didn't get around to finishing that and actually implementing that into the game. You'll notice if you watch the E3 gameplay preview that there's four levels on V's apartment, however you can only access two in the final game. And if you actually try to make your character visit those unaccessible floors, the game will just kill you. Not from fall damage, but because they wanted to restrict your access from those areas. I also remember finding an example of an unused ripper dock item where you could actually enable it through their debug console, but you couldn't use it in the game because they never actually implemented the real power-up feature in the final version. This and plenty more examples just kind of showed that this game was rushed to meet its release date, and they really did the best they could to bandage it up and this is the product we were left with. Point was, is we want to open these doors, right? And we can open these doors if our strength is at 20. 20 means your strength is completely maxed out. This is the first real big mission, basically. So you're not going to have a level 20 strength unless you do some really stupid stuff, which I did. So I have level 20 strength, so I can open these doors. And what's on the other side of these doors? basically a glitched environment so they literally made those doors only openable by a level 20 character just as a way to soft lock you out of it because if you go out here it's just glitched up there should be enemies here because when we walk through there were enemies around but they're all gone because you're not supposed to be here and all that remains is the cameras and if you try to go through the door you came in it doesn't open at all so no matter what in this specific situation you need to do the pass through the maintenance tunnel
I think Cyberpunk's a pretty sick game, and if you're playing it on PC, I recommend giving it a shot. Bugs and all, just expect that to take you out of the immersive experience unless you want to wait for all that to be ironed out. There's just a lot of oddities in this game that scream, I'm half-baked. That's a phone call. Hello? Uh, give me a Pokeball. Yeah, like a tuna ball. Poke! I think the thing about Cyberpunk is that it's a really, really good game when it's working right, but it's not the revolutionary game that everybody was expecting it to be, right? Like, I love the setting, they nailed it, and it's everything that I would want in open world, first person RPG type of gameplay setting. You got Japantown, then you got the countryside, then you got uh, some other areas, and um, they're really cool and I don't want to spoil all of it, but there's a lot to explore here, and it's fun. It's kind of like, the game's kind of like this, this hyper future realistic mosh pit of America, but also not just America. It's like if all the countries just kind of had, a, had an orgy and it was all in the future. It's pretty cool, dude. I think the problem with Cyberpunk, outside of the bugs and all the immersion breaking elements and parts that just feel half-baked about it, is just that none of the gameplay elements are anything revolutionary or next-gen. Granted, this is on a PS4 and an Xbox One, so at the time of its release, it wasn't really next-gen. But it just kind of gives you these hints of reminders of other games that you've played before. Oh, I'm sneaking around and I'm avoiding the detection meter. It's kind of like Far Cry. Oh, I'm hacking by pushing a button. It's kind of like Watch Dogs. I'm shooting waves of enemies. Oh, it's kind of like Borderlands. And the game does all of these elements fairly well, but there's nothing really outstanding about it, right? Besides the world. Like I said, I think the open world is probably one of the most dense, detailed environments that we've ever seen in a video game, which is pretty sick. While we were talking about the gunplay, one thing I've noticed is that the AI is pretty hit or miss. Sometimes the game can feel pretty challenging, and other times it can kind of just go like this. Hey dog, you don't look too good. But I guess that's also to kind of be expected in games like this. I mean, games like Skyrim and Borderlands and basically any open world shooter looter type of game has glitchy AI to a point. So I don't want to knock it down too much like that, but it is something that's worth mentioning. And it just goes into the fact that I don't feel like everything was intricately fleshed out. When you're traveling along the worlds, there's gangs on the side of the road that you can wipe out. And then if you go down the road and come back, they'll respawn. And just like little things, Things like that feel like they were having to take shortcuts in a lot of areas just to get this game out. But for all of its flaws, I think it's a pretty good game. Once they iron out all of the bugs, I feel like it'd be a pretty competent experience. But man, 720p, barely hitting 30 FPS on last gen consoles. That's pretty rough, man. Maybe we'll take a look at that when I can secure a cheap copy of Cyberpunk for consoles, but uh, as of right now, would not recommend you buy this. If you gotta play Cyberpunk, pick it up on PC, have a good time, expect a lot of immersion breaking elements, and uh, yeah, pretty sick, dog. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's been T, and um, if I can think of anything else to talk about related to Cyberpunk, you'll see it in my community tab or Twitter or any of my other social media and things you can follow. Support the Patreon if you want to directly support my videos or just watch the videos, that helps too. Did a pretty sick Skyrim video, you can check that out. And I think I'm done with the self-advertising here, so uh, see you guys. By the way, the unintentional parkour stuff in the game, pretty sick. Mucho, mucho, mucho dinero en la calle ando, estoy yendo mucho, mucho.